Hello, hello, hello. I'm so excited for this episode because my guest here and I have talked about this Mm -hmm. for way too long. (laughs) But it's also coming at the right time. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it's important for us to remember that things are always unfolding as they should. And this woman came into my life Like, (laughs) I met her husband on summer solstice in 2000, what, six, when did we move out here? 17? 17. 2017. I I met her husband, Hargo. He's DJed with me before at festivals, Mm -hmm. Feather and Dot. And we both, the three of us moved to Joshua Tree at the same time. Right at the same time. Yeah. And I've, I feel like, (laughs) huh. Alice and Hargo have been conduits for me to mm-hmm. really embark on the medicine path and to mm-hmm. continue to mm-hmm. heal my inner child mm-hmm. and to heal my traumas. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I just love this woman so much oh, and she brings such a light into the world and has always just held, held me when I needed and had my back and I've done all of my massive plant ceremonies yeah. with her as well, yes. working with grandmother ayahuasca and grandpa That's peyote. Awesome. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so um, mm-hmm. I just love you so much, I sister. Love you too. I love and you too so I'm much. just so grateful before this, uh, we pushed record. It was the first time we've been able to catch up in months and mm-hmm. it was just nice to drop in and yeah, uh, to see that we're feeling the same feels right now. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important for all of us to remember that we're just kicking off a new decade. Yeah. And we're finishing Saturn cycles from 2012. Mm-hmm. From 2012. Where it's been wow. seven years. So uh, we have a whole new consciousness. Wow. We have a whole new DNA. And so I feel like what's been going on lately has been the last of the residual Mm. of the Piscean age. Mm. And that's why it's been really intense lately. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot. One of my favorite poems is um, by a poet, D.H. Lawrence. And he talks about um, when we get out of, how does it go? When we get out of the uh, glass cages of our egos, like squirrels turning in the cages of our personalities and we get into the forest again, we shall shiver with cold and fright, but things will happen to us so that we don't know ourselves. Cool unlying life will rush in and make our bodies taut with power Mm. and we shall stamp our feet with new power and old things will fall down and we will laugh and institutions will curl up like burnt paper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's just say that's what's going that's down. That's what's right going now. down. <laughs> <laughs> that's but definitely what's going yeah, down right now. Things are uh, I'm seeing it on a personal level in a on a community level in a global level that um the institutions the the energies that are ready to crumble are crumbling Mm -hmm. and the light leaders, the star seeds, you know, all of those that are ready, that have said yes, that have a mission are rising up. And it is, it is awe, it is jaw dropping, awe inspiring, terrifying, like glorious. Mm. And it's just, it's all happening. And I can see it, you know, in, um, in my own life, I can see it reflected and, you know, to know you're like a drop in the ocean. You're just a little, little mm-hmm. bitty piece of this evolution of the, the Aquarian age, mm-hmm. you know, our shift in consciousness mm-hmm. and, um, it's, it's bigger than all of us, but we're all a part of it. Aho. Aho. And that takes courage. So much Because courage. it's so the unknown. Yeah. And we're having to trust and surrender and have faith in that inner knowing, Mm -hmm. but that takes time to get to that space too. Mm -hmm. that trust. It takes doing the deep work. Yeah. It really, really does. Because if you're not feeling that trust, (laughs) you know, if you're, if it's, if you're not feeling that trust within yourself first, 
it's going to be kind of hard to trust something outside of you Mm -hmm. too, whether that be God or someone else. It's, it's about you being able to become aware of your due diligence and to see what you've been able to conquer and to know that you don't have to do it alone, Mm -hmm. that you're always supported. Mm -hmm. Like we've got friends, we've got God, spirit universe, our ancestors, our family, strangers. Yeah. You know, there's, we're always supported. Yes. And I think the biggest thing we have to remember is that when we're going through it, it can be challenging. But what we're going through is going to be helping a brother and sister down the line. Yes. Yes. That's a really, really beautiful thing to keep in mind. And I was thinking about that today. Um, You know, I went through a period of about seven years of being really sick for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I was, um, you know, many of us, you know, I know a lot of modern individuals dealing with it, right? Like digestive disorders and... Um, adrenal fatigue. Yeah. Autoimmune, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which I have opinions on autoimmune. We'll get to that later, but, <laughs> but, uh, cause I, I, I really believe that our body doesn't attack itself. You know, it, it is, um, trying to heal from something that, that it wants to expel release on earth. And, um, but I remember morning after morning, I woke up, um, for seven years and, it almost feels like a dream, you know, because I have so much gratitude for like the restoration of my body temple. But I remember those mornings of waking up and it literally felt like I had to like pull myself up, like, you know, like pull yourself up, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. And I would like do that physically with my energy every day. And I just remember as I was doing that, I would say to myself, when I get to the other side of this, I'm going to help. I'm dedicating my life to helping and serving other people through Mm. this. Just like you were saying, like down the line, like the brothers and sisters. And that is part of, I really believe that whatever, um, we're going through on a personal level that, that brings us to our knees, that, that asks us of like, when we really reach that point of like, Oh, I, me of little, I can't do this. I need help. I need to surrender to the big I am whatever that is that brings us to our knees, that asks us to surrender that challenge, that opportunity, that obstacle. I believe if we can sit with that, be with that, love it, hate it, bless it, you know, like the whole thing, but have that intimate experience with that challenge. That is the, what alchemizes us into our power. That's what alchemizes us into our purpose. And like you say so well, that, that is the medicine that I believe that we have in turn that we give to others to heal, you know, and it's just them connecting then to their medicine Mm -hmm. and the next woman or man connects to their medicine. Yeah. I hear you 100 because we came here to help each other heal. And I definitely feel like this wave of people that are here right now, we are the sacred disruptors. Mm. This wave of people that are here right now, are the ones clearing the ancestral mm. karma. Yeah. We are the dark night yeah. of the soul generation, mm-hmm. you know, where we're saying enough is enough because we're a generation collectively that is a bridge between two millennia. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we're literally paving. Wow, I never the, thought of it like that. We're That's paving amazing. the path for our generations and the generations to come, our lineage for a whole millennia. Yeah. Wow. That's profound, Sabrina. I've never thought of it like that. (laughs) Ain't no thing, right? (laughs) Uh, I think about that. That's amazing. I think about that Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, both of us are Kundalini practitioners. We know when we do the work, we're clearing seven generations behind and seven generations before. I think that's why a lot of us are, you know, clearing money stories Mm -hmm. in a time where families or lineages back when maybe didn't have the, 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 the resources. So there was that scarcity mindset Mm -hmm. and it's, it's deep. Yeah. It's very deep. A lot of our traumas aren't our traumas. Yes. Yes. Something that uh, a friend told me once, I think this is fascinating. So we think about ourselves when we're in the womb, 
when we are in the womb as women, we, we have little tiny, beautiful ovaries that are forming and there's eggs in there. Mm -hmm. And so that means at one point we were in our grandmother's womb. We were, we were actually in there. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, that legacy of, of what's possible, um, when we start doing this work of seeing, going back into the past, you know, energetically and through, through the timelessness and also reaching into the future and saying, you know, I liked what you said, the sacred disruptor and, and Hargo and I will always say like, we're the transition team, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I think that I made a deal to come in and be part of the transition team and, I, and I'm in whatever that looks like. And what an amazing time that we get to live in to experience like contrast on, on the most profound epic level mm -hmm. and to say, I choose unity consciousness. I choose the light. You know, I see this, I witness it, I honor it and I know where I'm going, where I'm headed, you know? And that's, and somebody said this to me today. It was, it was profound. Um, when she talked about like, you know, the vibratory field of consciousness, I, I think like what the lowest is, is death. And then mm -hmm. there's like shame, which is mm -hmm. way at the bottom, right? And the guilt, emotional guilt, scale, the yeah. emotional scale, the frequency or the hurts. Is it hurts or? Yeah, the hurts. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and we were talking about, you know, where we start kind of making the ascension process into courage. And she articulated it so well by saying the difference between those who, you know, could get sucked into a downward spiral uh, versus those who can move into an upward spiral. I think that, um, that piece that can, can really help us flip is vulnerability. Mm. And I thought that's profound because if we have the courage to be vulnerable, to let our defenses down, to let ourselves be seen mm -hmm. warts and all and say, I need help. I need support. I don't have my shit together. You know, like, mm -hmm. uh, can you see me? Can you love me as I am? I believe that that's the turning point where we can, we can embrace this upward spiral because well, it brings we, connection. It brings connection, right? Mm -hmm. Like true, true connection. Mm -hmm. And I thought what a beautiful thing right now that what the world needs the most is, is vulnerability because it exposes us and, in, in or a better way of exp it reveals, it reveals how multifaceted we are and also how much we have in common and what a relief, right? When we can let that down and say like, these are, these are wounds. These are fears. These are insecurities. And also these are my gifts and this is my greatness. And, and this is what I came here to do and to lay it all on the table. And for somebody to see that and then, and then to allow yourself to be seen, mm -hmm. you know, I think that that can be the turning point in this, it, when we're talking about like being between two millennia, right. That the, uh, vulnerability I think can actually be a turning point for, for us, um, in terms of which direction am I going to spiral in? Definitely. I mean, I, I definitely take pride in that because mm -hmm. I consider myself a spiritual teacher leader who unapolog unapologetically shares my vulnerable truth. Mm -hmm. I see you do it all the time. It's very brave. Thank you. Yeah. It's been a lot of my own healing, like trusting. Yeah. Uh, because for a long time I would shut down. Yeah. Like, who am I? Like, no one cares. No one, no one wants to hear what I have to say. But what I've realized is that from that courage to be vulnerable, there's a deeper level of respect that also comes through. Mm -hmm. And to be known as a spiritual teacher leader in this industry of like, everyone's like, oh, she's the real deal. You know, I hear yeah. that all the time. And I, I take it with a grain of salt in a way, cause I don't want to like get my ego all up about it. I honor and I, I, I respect it and I receive that, but that has been, uh, a lot of work mm -hmm. to get there. Mm -hmm. A lot of, uh, non-judgment. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of our disease we can get in our body is from that judgment. Mm -hmm. Any of that like incongruent uh, emotion or thoughts or beliefs is what causes that disease, mm -hmm. um, inside the body. And Alice like her radiant reboot. I remember when you were first launching it and mm -hmm. I jumped on it cause I was having serious, serious health issues. Like I was just fatigued and done and tapped yeah. out. 
And uh, you're like, you should do this. And I did it. And it really helped me. I'm like, so glad to hear that. Re- realign. Because I was going, it was during like the peak of my Saturn return. Yeah. Yeah. And it's no accident. Your husband just like released an album, Saturn Return. <laughs> I know. What's going on? <laughs> like, we I can't told, plan this. Yeah. And I told Alice too and Anne Harko, like, I know I had to come back to Joshua Tree to navigate through my Saturn return. Mm-hmm. Um because my Saturn is in the fourth house of family. Mm. And so I, I needed to continue to heal. Like I needed to come back home mm. to heal my lineage, wow. to, to be that sacred disruptor of saying it ends here. It ends here. And mm. here I am Bali, you know, and I'm going into this next phase because the completion happened. Yes. And I think there's also a time where we have to answer the the yells of like change of scenery. Yes. Opportunity. Yes. And sometimes that can be scary too, because you're getting out of your comfort zone. Um, but Alice and I were talking before and I want to talk about it now. Like we're in this space right now of taking these leaps Mm -hmm. and vulnerably sharing our, our mess Mm -hmm. (laughs) and making that our message to bring in more compassion to the collective. Yeah. 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 I think that, um, specifically or what I've seen right now in this time, and it's, it's really great getting to work with clients and work on a group level and then be in a community and, you know, be in our larger earth community because you can see, like you're saying, all of us shifting and growing and everybody has their own individual experience. That's so unique. And there's also, I think, rhythms and cycles, right? Of course, that we feel astrologically or, you know, just in a, in a space of togetherness as we evolve. And what I'm seeing right now, and we were just talking about it is a space of like, I think about like, if you're, if you're in the jungle and you're grabbing onto a vine and you've got to reach for that next one, there's a period where you have to completely kind of let go to grab a hold of the next one. And that requires and asks, and I've been really faced with this, right? Like, do you trust? Mm -hmm. Do you really, really, really trust? Mm -hmm. And okay, if you don't trust, let's, let's, be really brave and look at that. And, um, it's a core wound. It's a core wound. And, you know, I I recently, um, I have a wonderful woman that, that I see out here and, um, she was showing me, or we were talking the other day because there was this part of me that like, you know, I'm in my practice, like, as you know, like practicing Kundalini, like there are certain spaces or vibrations where I can get so elevated and I'll feel something actually pulling me back down. Mm. It's inside of myself, right? Like I take responsibility for it, right? Something pulling me down and pulling me down. And so I feel like a lot of times I'm breaking free out of something and then I'm going, you know, getting the expansion and yeah, the contraction, and the contraction mm-hmm. right? And we stayed with that contraction energy and she asked me to like really, um, through imagination, visualize it. And it was almost like this clamp, Mm -hmm. this old clamp. And, and, um, we started having a dialogue with it and it was telling me, it's like, Alice, don't you see that? Like, I'm your survival. I'm what's like kept you tethered to the earth. Mm. Like if I wasn't here, you probably wouldn't have made it. Like I've kept you alive. And I, and as I started looking at it, I began to see, oh my gosh, that's actually like the survival, the reptilian part of the nervous system. First, first dimension living. Yes. So we're multidimensional. We're multidimensional, right? Mm-hmm. And that exists. Like, can I honor, can I honor survival? Can mm. I honor the evolution of my species? And sitting there and really thanking it and breathing with it and like dialoguing with this part that was like, like, excuse my language, like, bitch, I kept you on the earth, you know? <laughs> like, I love it. Yeah. I'm like, always like, I always say, bitch, come on. <laughs> I kept you here. My little Southern bell yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need, you know, and, and so as like the trust piece, right? Because the trust is there's so much expansion that can happen when we live in that, in the surrender and the, and the, also the opening, right? The opening and opening requires, right? Our, our feminine centers to really say, okay, 
you know, I'm not going to contract here. What does it feel like to open, to dilate, to expand? And, and as we do that, what is unlike it, what is not healed gets revealed. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I really believe that as we do this work, it's so important that we honor whether it's the shadow or the survival or the places where our psyche or our physical body maybe hasn't caught up with our spirit yet, the places that are still in distrust. And can we love those aspects? Can we learn from those aspects, you know, and bring them with us? Because they're still parts of us. They're parts of us. How do you expect to be fully embodied if you're bypassing those areas or ignoring just because it doesn't look pretty? It doesn't look pretty, right? Yeah. And there is some... Like if we really start swimming around in like the ocean of ourselves and the psychic, like, you know, limitless pools of ourselves, there is ugliness. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, that is the fabric of God is also embracing the ugliness. Well, that's the opportunity for us to transmute it and find that beauty in that breakdown too. It's true. And there's beautiful, um, poem from Rumi where he says that with every, um, beautiful boy, there is an ugly teacher. Mm. And like, can we love the ugly teacher as much as we love the beautiful boy or the beautiful girl, right? The beautiful girl. Can we, can we love that, that ugly teacher? And that, that's radical. I mean, let's be real. You get, you find the most growth through those ugly periods when you're like, ugly Kim crying on the floor, (laughs) like snot coming out down the face and those moments of pure surrender Mm -hmm. and vulnerability, because that's the breakthrough. There's the, the, um, the purging. Yeah. That's a purge. That's a purge. It's an energetic purge. And while it can be really ugly and it can feel really defeating and you can find yourself in these downward spirals, again, it's important to have that support system. Yep. And I think more than ever, the Aquarian age is about cooperation and community that the lone wolf days are over. They're over. They are over. We need each other. Mm -hmm. We need each other. We're all so sensitive. Mm -hmm. And I think with that needing of each other, it's also very important to have that discernment of like the people in your inner circle to make sure there's also uh, this balance of reciprocity. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. I, um, a friend told me this, I I love this, that we can't really begin to heal if, um, there's not a container of safety. Well, think that's of course, that's the root chakra. That's the root chakra. So if we're in an inner circle and, um, we're like, I don't know, or a bit, I think that the power of discernment is making sure that the people that are in your life, the people that are around you, like the inner, inner tribe, that you feel supported, you feel supported in the ugly, in the ugly cry and also in the fullness, Mm -hmm. you know, and really like, can you be all of yourself with these core people? And if, if you can't, it's like, number one, where can't I be all of myself with myself, right? Taking that responsibility for ourselves, and then really seeing what relationships I loved what they, they, they talked about in the, in the peyote ceremony. It was so beautiful. Like bowing to the guardians of the East is like the new day, the new beginning. What am I bringing in? And then also the guardians of the West. What am I saying goodbye to? What's closing? What do I need to let go of? Mm. And, and sometimes in those inner circles, if there's not safety, there's not trust, there's not respect. And that communication can't be made for that to be amended, repaired, um, transmuted together, right? Both parties being able to be responsible and accountable, then sometimes relationships really do need to end in order for us to get that level of containment around us to keep moving forward and keep ascending. And that's hard because there's a lot of goodbyes. Well, and then speaking, like that's a total full circle of what we started with this conversation Mm -hmm. of this dismantling of the old because the patriarchal system was the Piscean age. Mm -hmm. And as a humanity, we weren't safe. Right. Right. We were not safe. No, it's barbaric, right? We were not safe. And so this is why we're continuing to reclaim our power in that space because we've evolved from the patriarchal system and the patriarchal age into the golden age Mm -hmm. where that 
is not sustainable. The patriarchal system is no longer sustainable with these new frequencies and these new codes and the evolution of humanity. And so we've had to say goodbye. And you can tell from the institutions that are like, oh my God, like change is here. We have to change too. And that trigger can come from people who haven't done the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you haven't done the work, you're terrified, right? And how, how would you not be, you know? And, and I just, I have a lot of compassion for like those who are like rooting down into the old, because if that is what you know, and you're sure that it's right, that anything that is in opposition to that or different than that really is perceived as a threat. Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, that's what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing. And I also have to have compassion for them because I know that they probably didn't have a very supportive childhood. Yeah. Yeah. Because if that's the fundamental development of that root chakra, that subconscious mind, right. zero to seven, I'm telling you, if you're seeing these people on mainstream media or politicians that are still so in that scarcity, fear-based, patriarchal way, they probably didn't get that love from their father, Yeah, that support. They probably didn't get that love in community when they were young, probably not seen, not heard, yeah. and they're lashing out as children yeah. because that inner child within them is craving love. And the, some of them don't even know how to honor that with themselves because they're so disconnected to that truth. Yeah. Yep. To the truth and to the survival, Mm -hmm. right? The survival of a a paradigm and ideology of being right. And, um, it's like, would you rather be right? Would you rather be be happy? happy? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I, I really appreciate what you're saying, you know, like, drawing it back into seeing that, you know, a pot, like, you know, the fact that you're watching TV or the news and you're looking at a politician and you're saying, can I see the child in them? Can I see the hurt child in them? That's the test. That's really powerful, Sabrina. I thank you. I've been obviously keeping up because I give a shit about (laughs) my future and the future to come and, you know, having really do interviewing, you know, like I interviewed Shahid Batar, who's running against Nancy Pelosi and having fresh new blood into and bringing in of people who actually are living on a path of consciousness and awareness where it's not ego based um, leadership. And it's about you're, you're doing this. You're, you're like, these politicians need to remember why are they doing it? Are they doing it to actually lead? They should take your course and find out their <laughs> sacred why. <laughs> Any politician out there listening, let's take thrive. Yeah, yeah exactly. We've got it figured out. Just take Sabrina's course and leave her a really good testimonial. Bless Alice. Yeah, no, but I, I think a lot about it because that's the thing we have to also see. Are you, are you doing the work to be a careerist? Or are you doing it to actually be of service, mm-hmm. especially in a service based a politicians? That's a, a service civil base, servant, right? right? They work for us. And I think sometimes we forget that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's the fact that we're in this election year and the establishment is nervous. Mm-hmm. And I know I was with you because your team were, was doing all the live streaming for Marianne Williamson. Mm-hmm. So we went to her announcement mm-hmm. when she was running for presidency. That was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was really empowering to see like, wow, there's actually a shift really happening. And while she dropped out, just the fact that she was on a main stage, on a debate stage, talking about it, and everyone was like, oh, orb gang, whatever, you know. Yeah. But I think it was a seed that was planted. Yes. Yes. To bring more consciousness and awareness of what leadership looks like. It doesn't matter if you're a politician. It doesn't matter if you're a spiritual teacher. It doesn't matter. That leadership is about making the mess, your mess, mm-hmm. the message. It's about answering the call, seeing what has been the missing link to the overall golden thread and the Mm. connection amongst all of us. And how are you utilizing and honoring your energy and your gifts to better humanity. Mm, That's so beautiful. Amen, sister. Amen. And that's why I feel like while I'm a spiritual teacher, I've been answering the call to speak up more about politics 
because the, you know, Green New Deal or Medicare for all, these are part, this is part of the health of the humanity yes. and the planet. So you're talking mm-hmm. about grounding back to the earth and that survival. Mm-hmm. If we're not taking care of these things, none of us will survive. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's to me, it's a non-negotiable to, to, to not, you know, if I were not talking about it, then I would actually be doing a disservice and I would be out of alignment as to why I came here during this time in history. So I would be doing a disservice if I didn't speak up because I'm not seeing enough people that have platforms speak up about it. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's an issue Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because this is, we're all in this together. Yeah. And if you're not, if like, I always think of Jesus loving the leper. Yeah. If you have a privilege, you need to be aware of that privilege and speak up for those whose voice have been silenced. Yes. 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 Amen. And that can come in so many forms. So many forms. So many forms. It doesn't matter if it's a person of color, if it's LGBTQ, it doesn't matter if it's a religious space, Mm -hmm. um, health you know, mental health, addiction, um, disabilities, people in developing countries. Yes. Yes. Our everyday ways of being, our spending habits are the way we use our money, the way we use our power, Mm -hmm. the way we honor our energy. Mm -hmm. It all trickles in for all of us. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. And to see in, like you're saying, um, well, I'll, I want to back up and just speak to to what you said that um, when I was in Peru this this summer, um, was so so honored to co facilitate a retreat out there with a, with a group of extraordinary people, and uh, Kelly Castro and her husband Rudy Castro. They do uh, conscious relationship coaching, and we were out there and um, we did an ayahuasca journey with an ayahuasquero, and. He asked us, he said, do you know where the the most, we're speaking about activism, right? And where where the most uh, pollution is, you know, where the most pollution resides. And, you know, different people were answering, saying different things. And he said, it's the mind. Mm. It's the mind of humanity. And he said, the first place each of us needs to start is to clean up the pollution in our own mind and our own psyches. That's number one. And, um... I really, really appreciated that because it gave me like a very clear action on what, what is some of the most loving things I can do for the planet. And number one is to be aware of my thought life Mm. and something that I really took from our, um, uh, peyote ceremony with the grandfather medicine was the power of prayer, Mm. the power of prayer and, I'm sharing this right now with, with my clients, with yoga students, with friends and Hargo and I started the practice that was really inspired by a ceremony, you know, where we sit with a candle every morning and we acknowledge, you know, the creator creation, God, whatever you want to call it, right. Loving presence, higher power, and then offering a prayer of gratitude for everything that we, that we have, right. That you said, right. Like, the fact that there is money in the bank, the fact that, you know, we're drinking a delicious matcha latte, we're sitting in your beautiful home, you know, and we like every, you know, we're going to have fun 30 minutes. I mean, like (laughs) my God, and, and remembering the blessings, taking stock every day, because I don't know about you, but I can forget, I can really forget and move into what I don't have, you know, and all that. And the second piece is we release into the fire, like our fears, uh, what we're holding on to resentments, right? The, the shadow, the, the, the survivalist piece that needs to still unwind and release and then starting to pray for others, you know, and I'm so excited to hear more about your goal, you know, cause I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm going to pray for Sabrina and I bring my friends, I bring my family, you know, our, our, our planet, you know, the animals and the waters into the prayers and really praying for others has, has been, it's, it's such a big thing in, in speaking out loud, you know, Anthony William, the medical medium talks about the power of speaking. Like he, he loves speaking, uh, with and working with angels. And he says, think about spelling, spelling spells, spells, right. Mm -hmm. We speak it out loud. So speaking into the flame, your prayers. And I bring that back to say that 
that's like number one, what I can do for my own part in terms of helping to clear the pollution on the planet mm. is clearing the pollution in my own mind. The inner is creating the outer. And the inner is creating the outer. Mm-hmm. And offering that tool that was given to me by, you know, by beautiful native elders that was given to us to share that with as many people as possible. And when I was in Peru, um, the ayahuasquero said to us, he said, um, here's the good news. He goes, for the planet to have a global healing, we only need 10% of the population to wake up. Mm -hmm. And 10%, what is that? 777 million people to wake up and we can have a complete global healing. And I believe in that. Like I live, I live my life on that. Cause I don't even feel like it's a hope. I feel like it's like a determination. It's a determination that starts on a daily basis by first clearing myself. Mm-hmm. Right. And then life happens. And then I get all stressed out and wigged out about things that don't matter. And I get in fear and I get afraid cause I'm human. And then, but returning over and over and over again to that, my daily commitment is this, this prayer, my daily commitment is, you know, continuing to, um, to purge whatever mm-hmm. needs to purge and to express thankfulness for being a creature on planet earth right now. Yeah. And I think that also has to do with, I love that. I think that also has to do with us answering the calls when yes. you're feeling contracted and yes. you're feeling like outgrowing, growing spaces. That's mm-hmm. for me. That's yeah, why that's I'm going to Bali Yeah, is because if I'm here to lead and to be a person of expansion, if I'm not taking that initiative first to expand my own life, yeah. how do I expect that to be trickled out into the rest of yes. the world? As within, so without. So that yeah. courage to answer that call and to trust and to take that leap of faith, mm-hmm. knowing that you're always guided, knowing that your needs are always met and knowing that what you do, the actions, the intentions, it it permeates collectively, Yes, that should be the drive for you to stop playing small. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I love that. I love that. You just like reverse engineered. um, That's what I do. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. But that's That's what I think about, you know, that's what I really think about. And it's like, how can I call myself a leader if I know (laughs) I'm not, if I'm like not answering a call out of fear or, uh, like having this story, this pollution in my head. Totally. And especially when it takes that courage. Yeah. And that's what I think the real leaders, when we're talking about the the real leaders of the times to come. And and I, I really feel like I'm here to be in the transition to be, maybe have one foot in one millennium, one foot in the other, and to, to help be a bridge, to help say like, come on, let's, let's do this. Right. And I, and I, also like the humble awareness that the, the humanity and the children that are to come are going to be so much more far advanced and mm-hmm. beyond and like, hallelujah, please. They already are. They already are, right? Yeah. They already are. God, thank you, God. And, and like, um, when, when you were saying that, um, oh my gosh, I had a thought I'm, I'm kind of losing it. But, um, when we talk about like being that, having a foot in one space and a foot in the other. What's so amazing about that is we are, um, we're given a really interesting vantage point, like a really, really interesting vantage point where, um, because of that positioning, there's a level of compassion Mm -hmm. that we, we get to have and also a level of responsibility. Mm-hmm. like really personal responsibility first and foremost. And, um, I loved what you said that, that, um, oh, so the leaders of tomorrow, that's, that's was my train of thought. When we talk about the leaders of tomorrow, what I think is so beautiful is a leader that's transparent, mm-hmm. you know, a leader that exposes their humanity, their vulnerability um, shows all the colors of their psyche, of their spirit, of their soul. And, and I think that that's the direction that leadership is actually moving into is, um, there doesn't need to be this, um, <clears throat> somebody was, uh, it was Hargo's grandfather was telling me in neuro-linguistic programming, right. For duality to exist, uh, there needs to be a black and then a white, right? There's two points. And when you have two points of anything, there's duality, right? Republican, Democrat, left, right, good, bad, 
right, wrong, right? And so you have duality. He said, when you introduce a third point into that conversation, all of a sudden you have a triangle. Mm -hmm. And so what seems irreconcilable, good, bad, light, dark, when we introduce that third point, everything can actually begin to find direction and it can also begin to find harmony. Mm. And so like when we were talking about um, these new leaders, right? It's not about being, you know, perfect. And it's also not about this, like, you know, totalitarianism, right? This, but if somebody is willing to say, you know what, I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to let you see all of it. And they introduce a third point of possibility. New leadership can be formed. New structures can be formed where we move toward holism. We move toward holiness, holiness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Holy, like to be whole, we move towards these new possibilities. Right. And then like you're saying, these new codes, all these, like this, you know, is getting unlocked, is getting revealed, but we have a structure that doesn't say it's this or this it's, and it's inclusiveness. Mm -hmm. It's being right. The mess is the message. Mm -hmm. It's the work in progress and the masterpiece at the same time. And we move towards holism. New earth is possible. Right. And it's saying, you know what? I am a spiritual leader and I also have a lot of freaking work to do. And you know what? We I'm always gonna, do. We there, always do. Never, they're infinite. We're never, it's never like, oh, this is the ceiling. Yeah. I've arrived. Yeah. There's no arrival. It's constant evolution yes. because as you continue to expand, there's going to be more opportunities for growth. Yes. Yes. It's so true. And I but really, you have tools. You have tools. I can navigate through it. To the new level. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the difference that we have to really remember. Yes, it really, really is. That the tool, you're going to get the tool that's going to match the circumstance or the situation. Mm -hmm. And and that's going to unlock new possibilities. Mm -hmm. And you were saying something about um, how important it is to speak uh, and to be politically active. And I want to acknowledge you for that. And I also want to acknowledge that I believe every individual came here with a, a purpose and a mission, and then also a personal cause or what it is that they're passionate to, to help awaken and support. And I want to acknowledge those because for some people, it may not be political. For some people, it may be focused in environmental, which is of course has its, has its rings in, forms in political of activism, yeah. different forms of activism, mm -hmm. but all the different forms that it can take. And however that, that, um, what, it, what is the word, um, that, uh, philanthropic, um, drive, drive mm -hmm. emerges that, that we need all of the different ways that it reveals itself. We need like, we need the entire fabric of it and what, like what an unfathomable creator that has created in each of our hearts, a different drive, a different longing, a different desire. And I just really want to acknowledge what you're doing in terms of political activism and what you're speaking to. Thanks queen. You're welcome. And going to the UN and, and, and really stepping into this and having these conversations, I think it's really freaking brave. I think Thank it's beautiful you. territory and it's needed. I mean, it's definitely what I've wanted to do my whole life. Like, wow. uh, my, my dream was to get my master's in theology and work with the UN to do conflict resolution. Really? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Oh yeah. What? Yeah. Are That's, you serious? Sabine? Yeah, that was always my dream was Holy to get my uh, de my master's in theology and do conflict resolution. But I think the biggest conflict we have to see <clears throat> is uh, where is there dissonance or separation of people privilege versus unprivileged? Mm. Yeah. That's the big thing we have wow, to see because all of us have to, all of us are worthy of being seen and of mm -hmm. getting that help. It doesn't matter what, uh, the income or the roof over our head, there's a bigger purpose. Like the, the material is not what brings the happiness. Nope. It's the service. Yeah. It's the connection. It's living on purpose. Yes. That. And people can live on purpose and still have no money. Yes. And they're happy. Yeah. That's what travel has really taught me. Mm -hmm. Like living, like go, living in Thailand for a couple months and I got a tattoo and I gave him like a $30 tip and he's like, this is going to feed my family for a month. Wow. Things like that, that people, mm. especially in Western culture, take for granted. Yeah. 
And I think that's where the hum the humanness needs to really be um, reinstated. Mm -hmm. The humanity. Yeah. Uh, because this is an evolution that we're going through and a revolution mm -hmm. we're going through. And I think I had a dream the other day of like, it was so weird. I was like traveling and the dream was like, your biggest stress is that you live in America and you have to catch up with like the American dream oh. and the what, like, what is, this is what will bring you happiness. And, you know, there's so much, there's so many things in like the American agenda of like material more, more, more. And while it's great to have nice things, you can be in a big house with all this stuff, but still be empty inside. Yeah. And I think that's what a big awakening is happening, um, which is why I think a lot of people are doing that deeper inner work yes. because here they can have everything on the outside, but that can also be a form of bypassing what's internal. Oh, absolutely. Because you can have all these material things and a beautiful home, but if there's no heart in that home, yeah, not only is that felt but it's not sustainable. Yeah. It's not sustainable. And, and, you know, it's really, it, it was when I was in Peru this summer, um, uh, one of our guides, his name's Malku, very, very, um, powerful, powerful man and, um, very loyal and, um, knowledgeable, um, around the Incan people and he's extraordinary. And he was telling us, so he, he has people come in from all over the world, you know, to, to go on these journeys. And we went to all these different power sites throughout, um, throughout the sacred Valley. And it was amazing. We were in Cusco in his retreat center. And he was telling us, he said, please remember that, um, Americans, he said, are seeking transformation. He goes, please just know that he goes, most groups that come here are um, some some of the the most open minded, hungriest, ready and available are American, and that was really really encouraging to hear. You know, because I think that there's a huge percentage of our population that are like, well, I mean, our country's so young. Mm -hmm. right? That's what I was just about to say. Yeah, I mean, we're still no, like we're like in a teenager. Well, like, yes, yeah. And mm -hmm. so there's there's like okay, materialism got it right. The '80s got it. You know, and and the McMansions and the you know that. And, but, but all of us know on a certain level, right? Like we all want to have our base needs supported, taken care of like root chakra, like, you know what I mean? Like covered, right? We want a warm bed, like warm food and a place to sleep. And, but once you reach a certain point, there's, there is, I think within the collective American in energy, I think that there's a tremendous amount of seeking and awakening that's happening. It was really encouraged, encouraging to hear Malku say, mm -hmm. you know, out of everybody he sees from all over the world, Americans are coming in like very open-minded, hungry. And, and that makes a lot of sense if there is a culture without a lot of history. Mm -hmm. It's almost that there's a lot of well, blank, it's coming blanks. For, it's like such a melting pot of so many it's other cultures. True. But yes. there's the direction. The there's direction. the direction. Yeah. Like you said, that like choice point. Yes. Where, yes. where is the direction of that unity? And we've grown up in a society of div 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 division. Yeah. Yeah. Us versus them. And I think that's part of the whole evolution of the us and them. The us and them. And how can, how can we. we, how can we be a strong country as America, which is known as the melting power? People came from all over. Mm -hmm. If there's the racism, if there's the xenophobia, if there's these, um, these scarcity or beliefs or, um, you know, the xenophobic beliefs around people that aren't like you, right. Right. <laughs> then that's completely, um, disingenuous to the actual ethos of this country. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to ask you, cause I know you've been traveling around a lot and working with plant medicines mm -hmm. and, uh, everyone knows here how passionate I am and, what are you seeing as why there's a rise 
mm-hmm. and plant medicines, not just for Americans, but also for people that have navigated through addiction? Yeah, I think it's a really good question. And, you know, I'll preface that by saying I, I'm really open about this, but I've been um, uh, drug and alcohol free, and I don't consider plant medicines w- used intentionally because the intent is everything, right? The intention is everything. Um, but I have been free from drugs and alcohol. And for me, a drug is what closes down my intuition and shuts down my, my higher centers, disconnects me. Um, and so sobriety is actually something that I felt like in certain ways I had to lose to find, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I only speak for myself because everybody is different. Um, but I was, um, several years sober and, um, was intensely drawn to, uh, the grandmother, uh, ayahuasca, but, um, it took me maybe seven years into sobriety before, um, before I went down that pathway and I did it with very, very trusted, uh, a a group, uh, the same, same, we've sat with the same practitioners and, um, what, what drew me to the medicine personally was, uh, understanding that underneath the addiction and then underneath the seven year, um, journey, um, that I experienced with a chronic illness, um, and underneath the layers of the codependency, right. The people pleasing the, I'm okay. If you're okay. And, um, these layers stacked underneath it was trauma Mm -hmm. and, um, trauma that had been suppressed in my own psyche for, you know, for, for a long time. It can even be generational. It can even be generational. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had lived in a blackout, you know, when I look back, I'm like, holy moly, like for 16 years, you know, in a straight up blackout, you know, binge drinking. And, and I don't even know how I, how I, you know, like angels are real, you know? And, and so the plant medicine for me, um, when done in a container, first and foremost of safety, integrity, And with facilitators that are, have the capacity to let you do your own work and have the capacity to hold a space that's of the highest integrity. Like I cannot stress that enough. I cannot even stress that enough. Like there is no monkey business when it comes to this because the medicines are so powerful and they must be respected and you must respect yourself in the process. Like that is just paramount right to your experience. When you're in that space, I felt like the grandmother ayahuasca uh, was able to take me to a place and a depth of truth and of, um, of like, there's no bullshitting. There's no getting around, right? And moving into the grooves and spaces in my psyche and being that maybe there was so much resistance to, right? That I don't think any human power could have helped me get there. Mm. And so you reach a level of like soul bearing, this is who I am. And it's showing you, this is who you are. And, um, to me, I'm just gonna say, it reminds yeah. me a lot of that, uh, first dimensional bringing back to yes, the earth to the earth you can do the kundalini activations you can mm-hmm. do the yoga the practice to to bring you up to the ethers mm-hmm. but to remember the survival of being this, a, of being this, a human yes. yes of being alive and that's so funny you say that because the one of the first things the grandmother ayahuasca said to me was like most of my life I think because of the trauma then covered up with addiction and, and you know what I mean? And then my own body's response to maybe negative thought patterns I had picked up belief systems, right? You know, the whole matrix of that. Um, I had lived in a space where it told me that my primary thought is I want to get out of here. Mm. I want to get out of here. And, and it really, really asked me to make a commitment to the planet Earth, to mm. make a commitment to having my feet on the ground and commit to being alive. Mm-hmm. And that was a really big turning point for me in my recovery, in my life, in healing, was to say, you know what? Yes, I want to go and sing with the angels and I want to go back there. And do I believe that that's part of where my soul came from? Yes, that's all true, right? And And do I believe that we've been many people in many lives? Yes, all that's true. And, and the great beyond and what will happen, but right here, right now I'm on earth. Mm. 
and I want to be on earth Mm -hmm. and be, and at being on earth, I want to be able to be of the highest service on earth. Yes. And I'll tell you that the best thing that, um, a mentor of mine said to me that when I get, when I get lost, if I ever get lost in my own chaos, my own shit, right. What brings me back is she said, Alice, at the end of the day, the only way out of the matrix is service. Mm -hmm. Totally. I'm the happiest when I'm of service. If I'm finding myself really low, Mm -hmm. I, what allows me to get back up is being of service. Being of service. And that's it. Right. And I think that that's, when we talk about the plant, when we talk about these sacred plants, what have we, what have we noticed? And I think that for maybe right now where we are is we have cutting edge technology and we have, we have, oh, thank you. Um, cutting edge technology. That's, that's teaching us about neuroplasticity. That's teaching us about how to bring quantum physics into our everyday life to make it practical, practical to heal belief systems to, do you know what I mean? new programming that our brain can do. And we also have these indigenous plants that are surfacing. Mm -hmm. And so we have this cutting edge science that's proving God. And we have these indigenous plants that are, you know, proving and reminding us that we're God. And that's what I, when I was thinking, when you're talking about like one step in one millennia and one in the other, that to me, for me, that step in the other millennia is to honor the traditions of this medicine, of these medicines that have been helping people heal. Yes. For centuries. Yes. And that's something that's really important to me. And and I don't know how it's going to look or show up, but it's that I want, uh, I I want people to know that, um, that, uh, I am as a sober woman, um, plant medicine has been an integral, like part of my journey. Mm -hmm. And, um, I can, I will only speak for myself. Um, and of course the caveat being they're done in safe, safe, safe containers. And then there's time for integration and processing, Mm -hmm. but I've started to see this beautiful experience where it's not like an either or, Mm -hmm. right. It's an, and Mm -hmm. can we bring these beautiful principles of living, um, of, of, of being able to heal from addiction and also bring in these indigenous plants that can help us go to these spaces inside of our psyche and our souls and to that protect. need healing and to protect. Yes. Protect these indigenous plants. Yes. Because there is a lot of abuse happening too. Th- there is too. And I've heard some crazy shit and some people that don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And, and so I only, you know, if, if you do do this work, uh, whoever's listening, um, you know, really research, really understand who it is that you're sitting with, mm-hmm. reach out to Sabrina, reach out to me. Um, and let's talk about like really, really sacred resources for you Totally, um, because those, those circles are there and, um, it just demands the highest caliber of respect and also of, um, of safety. But I but mean, I that- don't know about you, but I, the fact that we've already had three major cities decriminalize plant medicine, right. Right. I really do feel that this is the decade where this is going to be a modality yeah. that more people will have access to. Yes. Even before recording this, I was watching new Amsterdam yeah. and they were talking about microdosing psilocybin. Oh, so yeah. what a talk about a, a conversation to people who may not have done the medicine yeah. or have had a different kind of stigma <clears throat> about <throat> it are being able to learn. Yes. You know, and I, that's where I feel like it's happening Yeah, and we need to make sure that the integrity of the medicine and of the practice remains pure. Yeah. And that, that's really, that's comes, a responsibility. That's a responsibility. And it's really, really going into the deepest parts of yourself and getting clear with your intention and getting clear with your intention and then ensuring that you have a support system to, to be in place and that you're, you're seeking, um, these containers that you'll partake in ceremony that are really in integrity. Mm -hmm. And when you can layer those concentric circles around yourself, I mean, the possibilities and the depths of healing, it's new territory for all of us. It is. And with that, honey, I think we got to go have fun. Yeah. It's 7.30. Yeah. We could talk forever, we though. We can talk forever. There is a few couple questions I just want to ask real fast. Yeah. What does sovereignty mean to you? Sovereignty means to me, that's an amazing question. It means to me that I can feel my center. Mm-hmm. I can feel my gut. I can feel my heart. I can use my voice. 
I can feel my womb. Mm -hmm. And I can make a decision, a choice that's in alignment with the centers and the parts of myself Mm -hmm. that I can make a choice and choices that speak to the truth of who I am. Mm. And I can also be okay simultaneously if those choices are not in agreement with other individuals Mm -hmm. and respect them simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So I think sovereignty is a space of, um, respecting and listening. I think it's listening to yourself and knowing yourself enough to know I can listen, respecting yourself enough to stand your ground and then respecting others if they don't agree. Mm -hmm. Right. Saying all of it can exist. Yeah. What would you say to younger Alice? How, how young? (laughs) Any young? Whatever Alice is coming up right now. I would say to the teenage girl, I'd say to her, I'm sorry. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm really sorry. And that you're a good person, Mm. that you're a good person. You're a good, good girl. Cause I think a lot of things were done. I think, especially as a teenager, most things I did out of a reaction, out of feeling like I wasn't good, you know? Mm. Yeah. I would let her know that she is good. And that she's a holy woman. Mm. Yeah. Showering her with all the love. Yeah. And where can we hear and learn more about you? Let's see. You can go to my website, alicefolks.com. And um, there's two offerings right now that I'm really, really passionate about sharing. And one is a uh, eight-week program called the Radiant Reboot. And it's really a mind, body, soul rocket ship to support somebody to ignite their vitality. And this was, uh, really the, um, done out of a love from healing from chronic illness. So it supports people if they're low energy, digestive issues. And then also it supports people to get into the container to help live their dreams. What did they come here to do? What is the message? What is the vision of their life and helping them to know they're supported to live in that. Mm -hmm. And the second is our, our deeper, I would say deeper. I would say, yeah, we'll go with that deeper, really six month, deep, deep dive. And, uh, that's the radiant rebirth. And that's where we start really looking at the traumas and the woundings and how, um, those wounds, if we have the courage to really sit inside the wound and honor it and uh, feel into it, that it can actually become a womb through which we birth ourselves. Mm, I love that, Alice. Thank That's you. That's really beautiful. Thank you. And that when we birth ourselves, we birth ourselves with our medicine. And that medicine is what we give to the next woman, we give to the next person. We share. We share. Mm-hmm. And then they have the courage to say, okay, I can stay inside of this, I can look at this. And by looking at this, by loving it, by staying inside of it, I actually harvest consciousness where I birth myself. And I believe that that's how we're going to have a global healing is one by one. We do our work. We do our work. We do our work. It's a presence. It's presence, right? And patience. Mm -hmm. But so, um, yeah, if you're interested, I do uh, complimentary coaching calls and breakthrough sessions where you get an hour of my time of a team member's time and we we have the privilege to have an hour of your time and we dive really deep and see how can we support you in mind, body, spirit, your journey and your destiny path. It's so, so beautiful. And all those you. links are in the show notes. Oh, thank so you. So you all can dive in deeper. And I what's the that. last little nugget of wisdom you want to share with whoever's listening? Mm. To be very kind to yourself, mm. to be gentle and, um, to remember that no matter what it looks like, it's happening for you. This life is for you. (sighs) Yes. Yeah. Aho to that. Aho. Well, thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sabrina. I really appreciate it. This is the perfect time. Yeah. We were going to do this like the day after our peyote ceremony and I was like, I'm integrating. And they're (laughs) like, like, ah, you're like, I'm integrating too. I was like, we'll figure this out before I leave. But I just really invite you all to really 
take in what this episode really brought forth mm. because there's such a call for leadership right now. Yeah. And it takes the, it takes you having the courage to lead in your own life first. Yes. Yes. To be your leader and to be your leader of one, you know, yeah. be your leader of yourself, be your leader of your dog, you know, yeah. your leader of your family, your community, your students, and to be the leader of all the parts inside of yourself yes. that need love, really, most of all. That's really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Alice. Thank you so much. And thank you. And thank you for being a leader, Sabrina, and how many people you're helping with this podcast. I, like, I looked and saw how many episodes you've done, and I'm just like, wow, the time and the love and the devotion. And thank you for being you. Mm, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And we'll be seeing you next time. Take care. Salam. So, um...